Thursday afternoon, everyone. I'm Andrew Dow with Saunders & Associates. It is time for another Happening in the Hamptons podcast, our weekly breakdown of the Hamptons market, new listings, and events on the East End. The Happening in the Hamptons podcast is sponsored by Neurotitle Abstract, the Hamptons' leading title insurance firm. Visit neurotitle.com or titleinsurance.com. And joining us this Thursday is Steve Glick, our Senior Vice President of Advertising and Marketing, Dave Bertiner, Vice President of Digital Marketing and Technology, and today, the one and only, Brendan Connolly, how Woo! are you, sir? Hey, Connelly. good morning, everyone. <laughs> good morning, uh, Brendan. Good, good to have you on the show. I want to give a quick, quick resume for everybody listening. So, you have a background in real estate development and investment sales in New York City and the Hamptons. You served as an intel analyst in the Air National Guard, and now, perhaps the hardest job of all, dad raising <laughs> his family in the Hamptons. Um, how is it living out here and working out in the Hamptons? So truly an amazing, uh, amazing experience being a father first off and uh, couldn't be happier to be a part of the Saunders family. And look, I, I really feel like uh, I'm in the right place at the right time. Um, market conditions, it's, it's sort of a, a perfect storm here in the Hamptons uh, with extremely strong buyer demand. A lot of families uh, are moving out to the Hamptons, settling year round. Uh, there's low inventory. Uh, which which is is certainly um, driving driving the the demand here, and then paired with the low interest rates. Mm -hmm. Last year, everybody was like flying out here because they wanted to get out of the city, right? Mm -hmm. But long term, this is a solid place to make an investment, right? And that's what you specialize in is is investing in the Hamptons. Yeah, why is that in real estate? Why, why? Yeah, why why would you say that? You know, why is Hamptons real estate a, a good investment for somebody? So Hamptons is traditionally um, a New York City uh, second home market, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, for the vacation and the, and the busy season here in the summertime, um, folks flock out and they're, they're looking for uh, rental properties. Mm -hmm. uh, as we all know, there's no hotel chains. Yeah. Uh, in the there's Hamptons. no Four Seasons, there's no Hilton, there's no Marriott's <laughs> out here in the Hamptons, which is great. So there's one McDonald's in South <laughs> <laughs> But so that forces people if they want to be out here what they have to rent a house right exactly and you know that's that's a service that that we all provide um, for for the clients that we we represent um, but from the rental perspective it really creates um, a, an income approach to these homes so families uh, and investors alike that buy property they can typically see a four to six percent uh, return, uh, which covers the expense of the home for the year. So, what, what kind of property are you looking for? Like, what's a good property to say, "Hey, this is a good investment," versus this other house over here? It's a good investment. What, yeah, so what it's it's for? all about the individual uh, and their their circumstance. So, um, look, a lot of a lot of folks buy property to to use the property. They want to mm -hmm. be out here, but um, if they have the ability to cover the expense of the of the home. Then they they rent it out. So it depends on the circumstance. If if uh, an investor is looking to buy a property, there's various asset classes that they can that they can buy, um, and either rent out for the peak season and use the property themselves in the off season or combination, um, and then also looking for for potentially a, a new construction um, or a value add property where they're going to rehab. So what is someone looking for? So they're renting a house. Do they? Is it always a pool? Is that like a number one thing they need? It must have a pool. Yeah, certainly there's there's a demand for for pool um, and, and other amenities in homes. Um, I think you know choosing choosing the right location and the lifestyle is is most important. And um, yeah, so what's the first thing you ask when somebody's like, "Hey, I want to buy in the Hamptons," and you go, "Great." The Hamptons is a pretty big area for as mm -hmm. technically small as it is. And you, do you say like, is it like, what's your price point? Where do you want to be? What Hamlet? Like, how's that conversation go? Yeah. So, you know, most, most of the buyers, they, they're sophisticated. They're coming from New York city. They already have summered in the Hamptons. They, they know where they are. They have friends. They, they are attached to right. they know one community or the other. Mm -hmm. And, and so that, that really helps from a sales person perspective, um, having an educated customer. And, and so that's the first step. And then knowing the, the size, price, and location of, of where they want to be can help narrow that down. Each community, I feel like out here, 
it's you know people always ask me you know what's what's your favorite place to be in the Hamptons and I, I always struggle with that question because it depends on my mood yeah, kind of <laughs> every, every town offers something. Every town offers something different from yeah. from the water sports, the surfing, the, yeah, the yeah. beach lifestyle to just having like farm fields, open vista, fresh air, lush landscaping, like and or being on the bay versus being on the ocean. You know, everything offers something different, and they're all so unique. So yeah. you kind of really have to understand when the person calls you, like, what are you into? What are you trying to get out of the Hamptons? Do you like swimming in the ocean? Do you like going to swimming in the bay, or do you hate water? You just want to have nice vistas and look at reserves and horses. Or the vibes, like Sag Harbor. I feel like it's an art vibe. Or art, know. art's a big thing. It's absolutely. like Montauk. It's like a surfer vibe. You know, like. yeah, exactly. So, so from from that investor standpoint, that's what you know. It's a unique opportunity. You're not just buying, um, you know, uh, an S and P index. You're owning a tangible asset here in the Hamptons. You link it to whichever area you're familiar, you're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And look, it's not necessarily cap rate driven or price per square foot out here. And I think that's the real value is that you you own this asset, you can use it, you can create memories uh, in the home. And and I think it's a it's a home run right now. And it's just it's just, you know, even in a busy market like we are, I, I'm telling people it's just finding the, the right deal for you. And well, it's so like you tell people it's like, OK, what if what if I could help you? Buy an asset that will appreciate historically over time. So if you ever sell it down the line, it'll be worth more than the day you bought it. And while you have it, you can use it, create your own memories, or rent it out for additional income. It's a home run. It's like, and over time, the the market it has appreciated over time, right? When you look at the data from the Hamptons real estate year over year, yeah, there's some some moments where it dips a little bit, but the longevity of it, it's always it's always going up. Right? Yeah, they're not making more <laughs> Over land. Time. Over they're time. not making more land here. There's a finite, uh, limited uh, of properties for sale, and you know it's a good good transition to just highlight something I'm currently working on. Sure. Is a is a property um, in Bridgehampton. It's over three acres. It's on Long Pond. Um, and this is a land. This is a land. This is land, this right? is this is a, a vacant building lot. Okay. Uh, it's extremely private. Is this here? Two hundred nine Hayground. Two hundred nine. So, what makes that a great investment? Because they're not making any more land. You could buy this piece of land and create your own. Yeah, it's you know, it could, it's, it, it's for it's for someone that wants to build sort of a masterpiece here. It's just a truly beautiful setting. Um, it's very private with water views. You can build an eight thousand square foot house, uh, pool, pool house, tennis court, and you know, you're in the, the heart of it so all here in Bridgehampton. The address of that is 209 Hayground, and it's currently listed for 3.4. 3.4. So say someone doesn't want land. They want they want to have a house with rental. They want to do a rental income. You have something as well, right, to offer them? Yeah, there's quite a few opportunities, and that's, you know, where I focus. And, uh, you know, like I was saying, a lot of these buyers, they're they're very analytical. And so that's why I think it's a it's a good match. Um, you know, a lot of times it's, it's looking and comparing the the data mm-hmm. um, as well as understanding the, the property but uh, a, a good listing is 34 hampton street it's in the heart of sag harbor village it's a historic property you walk to restaurants and, and, and what's so the unique about there's is there multiple units yeah there's t- it's a two unit so legal, legal two unit income producing so property. you could live in one and rent the other or rent them both so now you have two yeah, opportunities you know you could also income. convert it back to to single family if you wanted to wow um so those are those cool. are. I'm looking at the photos here. This is a nice one. Great spot. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great location. Yeah, it's, it's built great, in 1850. Great potential. It's a it's a completely different buyer for for someone that wants to be in Sag Harbor. Um, you know, it's it's walking. It's you know, Sag Harbor is is one of the you know the 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 best hamlets, um, arguably, and uh, because of the amount of restaurants and uh, stuff to do there. But to your point, I mean, there's the, the person that wants this particular property is is not looking for the ten thousand square foot house in Wainscott, or you know what I mean, because it's a totally different vibe, and, and that just depends on what particular area. Absolutely, it's, it's a great investment play. Or if you have two families, you know, trying to go go together on a property, it's it's something that fits fits their needs as well. well there's you, something for everybody. You there. said something that was kind of interesting to me, like you were like, you know, most of the buyers in New York City are analytical guys because. They're like finance or whatever. Um, do you find that when they come out here, they get 
they get more involved with the too involved with the data and they need to listen more because real estate's there's an art to real estate as well like you there, you can't you can't really datafy real estate it, there's i'd say that that's like 40% of it 50% of it maybe in terms of making an investment decision but the other 50% of it is is just the n knowing the knowledge of the area and the location do you have to like convey that with these guys or are they all like analytical everyone's different that's a great point though there comes there comes a point where the numbers don't matter right and it's are you comfortable could you see yourself using this property think about the resale and so forth you know you can only look at comps and uh, some of the, the the price per square foot and so forth um, but ultimately it comes down to what location you want to be in right got it yeah hmm. So, look, we, we, speaking of the numbers and analytics and data, uh, Steve, what are this week's numbers as far as sales transactions? Yeah, so over the past week, there were 42 listings that went into contract from West Hampton to Montauk. Compared to the same week last year, 2020, there were 87 listings that went into contract, which is a year-over-year -year decrease of 107%. However, if you go back to 2019, more of a normal year in 2019 versus 2020, there were 26 listings that went into contract. So when you compare 2019 to 2021, that's an increase of 62%. The breakdown of the 42 transactions this week, there was one between eight and 10 million, one between six and eight million, three between four and six million, 19 between two and four million, and 18 under $2 million. And this past week with inventory, there were 36 new listings coming onto the market. So with 42 going into contract, it decreases our overall inventory by six listings. The breakdown, mm -hmm. It another happens. That's yeah. another decrease. It's another decrease. Uh, the breakdown of those 36 new listings, there was one over 20 that came onto the market, two between 10 and 20, one between six and eight, three between four and six, nine between two and four, and 20 new listings, um, investment opportunities came on the market under $2 million. Love it. It's so much fun to analyze the market, you know what I mean? It's like... I want to know what's going to happen next well, year. Well, you're, you're a numbers guy, right? <laughs> I mean, you you look at the data. I mean, that's like part of your, uh, you know, if somebody's like, who am I going to work with as far as an agent? I mean, that's your strong suit. Yeah, just just one note to touch. I mean, if you, if you look at the numbers here mm -hmm. that Steve just ran through, the bulk of the sales are happening, you know, under, under $4 million. Oh, you know, yeah, of and, course. And the vast majority. So, you know. That's that's just something. So we're looking at the trends and trying to understand where to buy, and and that's sort of you know it's it's certainly a um, the, the target market right there is you know built yeah, much below more of a million. demand. If you're a seller in that price range, if somebody if no somebody problem. came to you right now and they were like you know there's there's opportunity I guess to um, maybe purchase and renovate. In some cases, there's people that'll purchase properties that are existing knock them down and, and build brand new construction because as you said they're not making any more land so what do you tell your clients as far as maybe what the best approach is to maximize their return on their investment at this particular time is it to buy and renovate is it to buy done new construction move and ready if available you know what do you think is the it's smart a great play? great question andrew you know the the market right now anything that's turnkey you know move and ready Bring bring your uh, your furnishings and that sells right off the shelf. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking for that, it's competitive. Right. And to get buyers prepared with financing, if if they happen to be financing, and to familiarize themselves with the process. Um, from your question, if you're a value add and, and you're comfortable to make the customizations of a of a home, that's certainly uh, an avenue. Um, a lot of a lot of people uh, are interested and they want to be in new construction and maybe it's not the right timing for mm -hmm. them um, it's a you know a little bit different of a, of a income approach where you have to finance um, a greater percentage of the land uh, but look there's there's deals for, for everyone and it's just finding what's what's right for you right uh, speaking so of finding what's right for you yeah, for this what do we weekend. got for this weekend? What's right, right for everybody? Yeah, tell us here. Right. My, my, top, my top three picks. <laughs> I have a funny one. This is funny. This kind of made me think of you because I know you're a cyclist. So there's the fourth annual Ride and Wine in the Hamptons. This is happening Saturday, September 18th at 8.30, beginning at 8.30 a.m. 
and you get to choose between a 10 mile or a 30 mile ride and then you drink you stop at different wine stops at 8 30 a.m yeah, I'm trying to figure out the legality of this. Wait, like, so can you, you ride <laughs> your bicycle? Like, are you allowed to do that? Like, can you no. ride your bicycle and while intoxicated? I don't know. If you can I, I don't do that. Well, I don't think <laughs> the pur- I don't think the purpose of that is yeah. to get intoxicated. I know, but if you're drinking wine, wine if you're drinking wine and, and, and yeah, it's a, it's a tasting. It's a tasting. Okay, but whatever. It sounds awesome. Where right? does it kick off at? Where does it start? Okay, so it kicks off off. It's uh, the perfect descent day. Um, the ride begins and ends at the stunning private Channing Sculpture Garden, adjacent to the Channing Daughters Winery. And I would say the Channing Daughters Winery is like an unsung hero in the Hamptons. Like, Where is it? It's in right, Scott, yeah, Scott right in Bridge. Yeah, right, right in Bridge. It's so beautiful. Um, they don't have like you can't just go there and like and um, sit down and like you can at Wolfer. But the wine there is fantastic, and you can get like a tour of the place. It's a, it's it's really a beautiful spot, um, and you know the wine is very reputable. It's sort of like the the secret wine spot that Got isn't it. such a secret. If that makes any sense. So you go from there to other. Yeah, you wineries. bike around. Yeah, so then you go. Yeah, you you might you follow the ride. Cyclist joint will join. I try uh, for wine tasting and gourmet lunch in the gardens. Um, and then you continue on riding. So on. are you in? So how you how do we wine, sign up for you this? You have lunch, and then you you take a ride, and you burn off, you know, your lunch. Interesting. And, you know, I don't know. All right, what I like that. I like that. That's a good one. So it doesn't sound right. like a competitive race. It's more of like a no, no, no. like a casual. All right, stroll. This one's for me and Steve. Me and Steve are going to get into yoga. We're going to get healthy. We're going to get into yoga, right, Steve? So this is for. Yoga in the Amagansett Square. This is on Sunday, September 19th. Does this have wine as well? Could we do wine and yoga? No. no, no. <laughs> okay, go on. That's a great, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. Yeah, they should just combine everything. <laughs> yeah, you know, just, when you include wine <laughs> yeah. in, in any of these activities, yeah, I'm yeah, game. Yeah. You bike right. to the to Peloton the yoga. and wine, you know. It's like, Perfect. <laughs> anyway, so this is at the, this is 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And this is at the Mandala Yoga Center uh, and Amagansett Square, um, and you just you know you do a yoga class. It's a great beginner yoga class for students who prefer a gentler yoga class. So it's right up our alley. Yeah, I like that. It's right up our alley. And then finally, you have the Hampton Flea and Vintage Market in Southampton, and you know, it sounds fun, right? What is it? A it's, flea market? Yeah. So it's a flea market from, but it's a Southampton flea market. Ah. Oh. So, you know, it's. It's not like your a Prada, typical a Prada humor. bag, you know, I, I use Prada bag product. Oh, that's cool. Who knows? But so <laughs> I haven't been to this one, it's but it's vintage. So it's a vintage one, whatever that means. So Sunday, September 19th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, this is at the Southampton History Museum, 17 Beating House Lane. And you can stop on by for a day of fun and treasure hunting. You can enjoy a curated selection of over... 50 vendors that will bring with them the best in vintage and hand. I think goods. that's going to be a hit. That's going to be busy. Uh, what constitutes vintage? How do you not want to do that? Vintage means used. It's another right. word is for it used. used <laughs> like, oh, this is a 2010 thing yeah. or like yeah. 1950s, so like 60s. Pair. Vintage, in my eyes, means it's it's used. I have a feeling there's going to be like a lot of bracelets, you know, a lot of art, little artwork kind of things. And well, there's going to be, a, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of treasure. It's something to yeah. definitely yeah. check out. You can do some treasure hunting, you know, you could, you could go buy your wife a present, you know. For, I will bike to yoga and then go treasure hunting. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Solid weekend. It so that, that's what you guys should do this weekend. That's just my opinion. All right. So, so where are you going to be? So, which one are you doing? What am I going to do? I'm definitely going to do. I'll do yoga. Like I'll imagine myself doing yoga. Uh, uh, you know, visual yoga. Virtual yeah. yoga. I'll do yeah. the visual yoga. <laughs> yeah. That could be a thing. We might have just invented a thing. Visual, visual yoga. Visual yoga. You sit there and you just visualize yourself doing yoga. Yeah. There's probably some health benefits. Well, I'm, I'm doing it already. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Fitness is a lifestyle. Yeah, we're very fit over here. <laughs> um, good stuff. Uh, Brendan, thank you for joining us today. That was good. Appreciate um, you guys. Yeah, that was uh, good insight, good information. Uh, to see all of our listings, of course, check out Saunders.com. Once again, the Happening in Hamptons podcast is sponsored by New York Title Abstract, the Hamptons' leading title insurance firm. Visit NewYorkTitle.com or TitleInsurance.com. 
that's it. Everybody have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. I'm Andrew Dow, and that is what's happening in the